Hello, bad of listeners, and welcome back to another episode of the Actively Passive Investing Show. As always, I'm Theo Hicks with Travis Watts. Travis, how are we doing today? Hey, Theo. I'm great, man. So today we are going to talk about how to make investing simple. And so we're going to go over four steps to make investing simple. As always, Travis is going to break down why we are talking about this topic today. Sure. Yeah. So lots of people, myself included at one time, can easily get caught up in analysis paralysis. Talk about that all the time. I see it every week working in investor relations. So this is just to basically, to, to the point of the title, make things simple You know, for you, the investor. So investing can be complicated, but it can also be simple. So the, the saying or the phrase I like to use all the time is simple, but not easy. And that's how I see investing in general. That, that's kind of my, my overarching philosophy on it. So we're going to cover four simple steps uh, just to make it uh, as simple and clear as possible. Just a framework that you can kind of plug in to how you approach investing, no matter what you're investing in, by the way. Of course, we talk all the time about multifamily real estate on the show, but hey, this could be applied to literally anything, even stocks. So with that, uh, Theo, I guess I'll dive into one and two. And then I'll turn it over uh, to you for steps three and four and we'll kind of do a recap at the end. You ready to get going? Let's go. All right, cool. So step number one is identify your goal. I know that <laughs> that sounds simple, um, but, but it's not always easy. So, you know, do you really know what your goal or what your goals are? In other words, can you clearly articulate them to somebody else? Okay. And are they measurable? by the way. So let me give you an example. Things I hear all the time. I ask people about their goals every week. I hear just very simple phrases like, well, I just want to generate some more passive income. You know, I just want to build some wealth. You know, I just want to retire one day. You know, th these kinds of things. Well, I'd say those are bad goals <laughs> because a better approach to that would be something like, I want to make $11,000 per month in passive income over the next five years by investing in multifamily cash flowing real estate so that I can replace my W-2 uh, job and income and I can work from home. I can spend more time with my family and less time in traffic and out on the road traveling. That's a much better detailed goal. <laughs> so that's what I mean by can you articulate it to others? Is it measurable? We've got a time frame in there. We have multiple whys, but we really understand what's going on and, and what the mission is. So uh, bottom line, here's what's happening. This is typically what happens when you don't get that clear on your goals and you just say, yeah, I want to build some wealth. Yeah, I want to make some money is you're going to run into a roadblock inevitably. There's going to be a setback. There's going to be a hurdle. There's going to be you know, a market correction. There's going to be something that happens. And if your why isn't strong enough and your vision isn't clear enough, you're just going to drop it and say, well, yeah, you know, I was doing that investing thing, but yeah, it didn't work out. So I'm going to go do this over here. And so <laughs> it's the only way to stay true and, and make it all the way through, um, you know, your, your mission. So that's number one, identify your goal and or your goals. So step number two is identify your investment criteria. So this is something I teach when I do seminars or when I speak to real estate uh, meetup groups across the US, usually virtually in the past year. But I'm always talking about know your investment criteria. I'll give you some examples. So it's going to, again, it starts with your goal and then you kind of reverse engineer, right? So you say, okay, if, if my goal is that 11,000 per month and Maybe I need, um, you know, cash flowing, stabilized assets that distribute on a monthly basis, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I like these particular states, these particular markets, these particular asset types. I like B and C class value add types of business plans. This is all criteria that I'm, that I'm spitting out a bunch of jargon. So you need to get clear on what that is for you, how that helps you achieve your goals. So Again, the danger of not knowing your investment criteria, what I see most commonly is that people get caught up in the analysis by paralysis. You know, it happens all the time because there's literally hundreds of thousands of different investments that you could be partaking in. And that gets very complicated and very exhausting when you don't know 
what, what you're looking at. You don't know what you're doing. You don't really have a why figured out. You're saying, well, should I go invest in crypto? Well, no, no, no. The stock market just did. That should be there. No, no. There's a real estate deal that just popped up. You're going to burn yourself out mentally <laughs> trying to go through that process. And, and I promise you, you know, I'm not telling you guys this just because I read it in a book. This is what I did from 2009 to 2015 when I started my journey in real estate is I, I had ADD. I was everywhere. I was just, I'm going to flip a house. Okay. That was fun. I'm going to do a vacation rental. Okay. And now I'm going to, I'm going to rent spare bedrooms out. And now I'm going to do some buy and holds. And it was chaotic. It was very exhausting. And it 100% led to burnout. <laughs> it took me about five, six years, but I was done. So Again, you know, take that goal that I mentioned a few minutes ago. If your goal is eleven thousand dollars a month passive income, well, then you know, <laughs> knowing your criteria would would look something like this. Well, should I invest in in bonds? Well, let's see. Well, they only pay out twice per year, so that doesn't meet my monthly income goal. They pay two percent a year, so that's not going to get me where I need to go for eleven thousand a month, unless I have millions and millions and millions of dollars to go put to work. And maybe you do, and maybe you don't. But this is what you're trying to decipher. So instead of doing the bonds, maybe you'd say, well, maybe I should look at some cash flowing real estate that distributes every single month, where I can get a higher yield on my investment. You know, something like that. So everybody's different, but you've got to take the time to educate yourself a little bit and write down your criteria and how that helps match up to your goals, which is number one. So that, that, those are steps one and two, and Theo, I'll let you take it away, three and four. You know, I, I appreciate you, you breaking that down and kind of just like going back to the first one about identifying the goal, you mentioned how, you know, when the, when the, when the going gets tough, having that very clear goal of why you're doing what you're doing will kind of help you push through that and, and continue working forward. But also, and you've kind of, you kind of mentioned this as well, it, it'll, it'll help you avoid that kind of ADD you were talking about, right? I mean, you, I, mean I, I like the way you broke it down. It's kind of like a, like a decision tree or a flow chart. So you've got your goal and say, okay, I want to make, you know, monthly passive income. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you can take a process of elimination. So yes, I want to do this. And so what are my options? What are the types of things that I can invest in? And then um, certain things will automatically be eliminated because they don't pay out monthly or they're not passive, right? Or they, and they take a lot of time to, um, to do because your goal is to, to essentially not, not work. And so you can kind of narrow down the scope of the types of things that you can invest in that could even help you achieve those goals in the first place. And so that is one way to very, to, to simplify it a lot because I mean, based off of my conversation with investors, the, the, the two big uh, roadblocks or big obstacles people face is the, the shiny object syndrome that you talked about, right? And mm -hmm. so they're just essentially taking way too much action. There's like flailing around and doing uh, too much or the flip side, which is the analysis by paralysis, which means they're not really doing, doing anything at all. And so, um, uh, steps, step four will kind of help. Uh, I'll kind of talk about in step four, how to get over that analysis by paralysis. But I think those first two steps will definitely help you uh, not fall into that shiny object syndrome, which is, uh, you know, you're really going to fall into one, one of those two camps when you're first starting out. Um, so those are, again, number one was to identify your goal. Number two is to identify your investment criteria. Step three is going to be educating yourself and then finding a, a mentor. And so you've, you, 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 this is after you know what you're going to invest in. So obviously you need to have to do some level of education depending on where you're at to, under, to, to identify your investment criteria and what to actually invest in. But step three, uh, the education in step three is um, a lot more detail a deep dive on that specific thing that you're going to invest in. So find a book, a podcast, uh, conferences, that focus specifically on that the seminars that focus, that focus specifically on whatever it is you're investing in, right? So let's just take multifamily, for example, right? Attend multifamily conferences or seminars, buy the best ever syndication book, other books on investing in multifamily. And then you but you also want to find an actual person too to be your mentor. Books are great, but there's really no back and forth. You can't ask a book a question that it answers it for you. You can't learn from, I mean, you can learn from someone else's mistakes in the book, but what about things that aren't put in the book? You can only put so much information down on paper. You can get a lot more out of an actual, of a, of a person who is uh, actually doing it. And we're actually going to do um, an episode that releases next week that'll focus on the good and the bad of, of a mentor. And so make sure you check that out for more details on 
what to look for when, when you're finding a mentor. But uh, we've talked about this before. The importance of education and mentor is ultimately you're trying to avoid mis simple mistakes that uh, other people have already made. And so you read the book, you go to the conferences, you get educated, you have your mentor, you figure out some of the, the um, I guess, simple, mis simple mistakes that were made that could easily be have been avoided. They tell you what they did, how it happened, what not to do. And then you don't do that. You don't have to learn um, on your own dime in a sense. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we, you know, had toast this podcast, why we write the books and host the conferences is that we'll, we'll bring you know, to the conferences, for example, you bring in, you know, tens of, of speakers who have really big businesses are already really successful. But in order to get to that point, they've made, you know, a bunch of mistakes, sometimes really, really big mistakes. I remember a few years ago, there was someone there who made a, you know, a multi tens of million dollars a mistake and he lost ten, you know, tens of millions of dollars. You got people who've lost all their money, but, but built it back up again. And they explain, hey, here's what I did wrong. Um, and so you can do step one, you can identify your goal, you can identify your investment criteria. And then if you skip step three and don't educate yourself and find a mentor and just start taking action, then you're going to run into a lot more problems, right? It might end up working out perfectly fine, but the probability of uh, making mistakes are, are much higher. Um, so, so bottom line, get a mentor, educate yourself before you go out there and start taking action, which is step number four. Now, this is where we get into the analysis by paralysis, because how much education, <laughs> you know, do you need before you actually go out there and, and take action? And uh, I, I remember I was, I was just uh, compiling, looking at some of the best uh, performing podcasts on this show. And one of them, their best ever advice was about how to avoid analysis by paralysis. And they said that, like, look, you're never going to have all of the information that you need in order to uh, make you know, the, 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 the perfect investment decision, no matter what you're doing, there's always going to be assumptions. There's always going to be unknowns and, you know, kind of what they said is that it's better to take action on partial information than to just do nothing. Right. Um, when it relates to getting closer to your goal. So going back to what Travis talked about, if your goal is to make $11,000 per month in passive income, but you're not going to make an investment decision until you know every single thing about this deal, this operator, this market, then you're never going to take any action because you're never going to know everything about that person. You're never going to ever think about that market. You're never going to ever think about the deal. And even if you did, something could change tomorrow, makes all the information you know, not accurate. And so just understanding how you know, to, to properly vet a deal, how to properly vet a sponsor, how to properly vet a market, having enough information that you yourself are confident in your decision, um, that, is, that is when you should go out there and start taking, taking action. Don't uh, fall into that trap of thinking you need to know all everything before you go out and take action, because then you you won't um, take action at all. And uh, we got a, we got a quote here I like from um, Harvey uh, Mackey. Is that if I pronounce it McKay or Mackey? Who says ideas without action are are worthless. So you can spend all that time creating your goal, uh, setting your investment type criteria, having a mentor, educating yourself, um, and have all that information in your head. But if you don't actually do anything, then it's not really, really worth anything um, because it's not helping you get closer to your goal and to actually go out there and, and, and do something. So again, on the one end, you've got the ADD, uh, craniatric syndrome, taking too much action. And on the other end of the spectrum, we've got the not taking any action at all. You want to find that, that happy medium um, and make things simple. And I think that what we've talked about today can definitely help you, get, again, if you're uh, shiny object syndrome push you closer to being uh, more focused. If you're not doing anything, push you towards taking more action. Hundred percent, hundred. And just it, you know, in regard to our theme today of making things simple, we'll we'll cut this episode short just to make it you know right to the point. But um, if you're the kind of person, I just want to add this as a side note to what you're talking about. If you're the kind of person that really needs. Uh, some help on, you know, taking action and just making it happen. There's a great book um, called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, ex-Navy SEAL. This guy's story is incredible. Just going through Navy SEAL buds training three times and then later going on to be an army ranger and go into the, 
you know, Delta force training. I'm just crazy, crazy stuff. But uh, anyway, so I, I just finished reading that book a couple of weeks ago. That's a book I wish I had read way back when, just to give me a little perspective <laughs> on, you know, what people are capable of in, in terms of uh, taking action. And I know I've shared this story before, but it, this is a great point to insert that one more time. But in 2015, I set a goal to read a book a week. So 52 books over the course of the year. And I did that. However, I see that mostly as, as a mistake because I wasn't taking action, right? I had my head buried in books for an entire 12 months, actually a little bit more than that. And so there were deals passing me by left and right. There were some great deals I later followed up on that I could have participated in that did incredible. I mean, incredible, but I, I was too busy reading, right? Cause I had just set this goal that I was going to do it. And so uh, you, you got to have a little balance. What I wish I would have done is maybe read like two books, you know, in, in January or February or something, and then taken a little bit of action, done a deal, you know, got my feet wet, so to speak, and then read a couple more books and then take a little more action, you know, finding that balance. So last thing, anybody, uh, you know, everybody listening, if you haven't already, here's the four steps again, recap, write them down retain them to memory. These are gold. These are absolute gold. So one is identify your goal. Two is identify your investment criteria. Number three is educate yourself, find a mentor. And number four is take action. That's all I got. Perfect. And I want to add one more thing that I just thought of at the very end. So another, another syndication school episode that we did actually on um, a company, Spartan Investing, who made the Inc. I think I'm pretty sure it's Inc. 5000 list. 5,000 or 500, I keep getting it mixed up. And uh, they, uh, it was one of the speakers at the, the conference and he was kind of going over some of the, the, the tips of how to become, you know, the, the, one of the fastest growing companies. And he kind of, he talks about essentially what we're talking about right now, right? You, uh, you set a goal that you want to do and then you figure out how you're going to get to that goal, which is in a sense is what the investment criteria is. And you go out there and take action. And I like how he put a time, a time frame on all of those. Um, and so I believe, oh, sorry, no, it was identify the goal and then figure out how you're going to get there and then educate yourself on how to get there and then take action. And so I think it was like um, uh, 30 to 60 days for each of those steps. And so uh, take 30 to 60 days to figure out how, you know, what you want, to, what your goal is, what your objectives are. Keep in mind, this is a company, not just setting one goal. So you can probably cut that time down. And then for each of those, those goals, spend 30 to 60 days, um, you know, uh, educating yourself on how to achieve that goal. And then 30 days setting up a step-by-step -step process of how you're going to achieve that goal with the you know, different objectives and timelines and things like that. And then go out there and just start doing it. And so I think by, you know, again, if you're having that analysis by paralysis problem, by setting a timeline for yourself saying, okay, I'm going to gather as much data as I can in 30 days. And then I'm going to go out there and I'm going to start doing it. Um, could be, could be very helpful as, as well. So uh, if, that, you know, if you don't have anything else, Travis, uh, we'll end there. Everyone, thanks for, for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions that you would like, like us to answer on this show or in our shorter form 60 second question segment, you can email that to me, Theo at joefairless.com. Thanks for tuning in. Have a best ever day and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, Theo. Thanks, everybody.